at the subdivision settings inside of the cutout editor. With the subdivision sliders, we can set an average polygon size for the created mesh. The smaller the size, the more polygons will be created. By default, the scale for X and Y is linked, but you can control both scales independently and add more polygons along one axis. For example, we could use more polygons on the Y axis for this shape in particular for a smoother deformation. Once you have set up your base topology with the subdivision sliders, you can then apply up to eight Catmull Clark Quad subdivision levels to create a high resolution mesh on the fly. So lay out your base grid topology with the subdivision sliders first and then subdivide the base mesh as needed with Catmull Clark. Now you will notice that using Catmull Clark subdivisions with triangles produces the infamous hexagonal pattern, which you probably know from other apps too. This happens because Catmull Clark works best with quads and not with triangles. So when I switch to mixed quads and triangles, the subdivision produces a much more predictable result. You also need to keep the meshing settings of the scene in mind. I said in the previous video that the plant uses triangles. Usually what you see is what you get in the editor, which means that the meshes used on the plant should correspond 100% to the mesh you designed in the cutout editor. But this is only valid as long as there are no other polygon shapes in the mesh than what was set up globally for the entire plant. So in this mesh, there are quite a few quads. Once I close the editor, Plant Factory will then force the mesh to use only triangles because this is the setting for the whole plant. This is not a big deal when the mode is set to triangles because a quad can be easily subdivided into two triangles without affecting the rest of the mesh. However, this changes when we invert the situation. I'll close the cutout editor for now and switch the plant to quad meshing. Watch the polygon count as I switch between quads and triangles. It increases tremendously. And when I enable wireframe mode, we see that the leaves are now of a much higher resolution than what we had originally set up in the cutout editor. So why does this happen? Well, it happens because we have triangles in the original cutout mesh which Plant Factory turns into quads to comply with the global quad meshing mode. To turn a single triangle into quads only, you need to subdivide the triangle into three diamond shaped quads. And to do this, Plant Factory applies one level of Catmull Clark subdivision to the entire mesh, which makes the polygon count go through the roof. Now, if we kept the mixed quads and triangles mode, this would not happen because both types of polygons would be allowed in the plant globally and then we would get to keep the original untouched cutout mesh with no modifications. So how can we then ensure consistency with the cutout leaf when we are in quad mode? The answer is simple. We need to make sure that there are no triangles in the cutout mesh. Let's get back to the cutout editor and see how we can do this. To get rid of any triangles, we will kind of invert the workflow from before. First, we will simplify the base grid by increasing the subdivision level equally for X and Y until we are left with just a few large polygons, no matter if they are quads or triangles. Now we will apply one level of Catmull Clark subdivision. This will turn any triangle that is still left into quads, ensuring that we get a quad only mesh. And we can then play with the other subdivision slider to change the topology until we end up with a mesh that we like. And now Plant Factory will not apply any further subdivision to our cutout mesh because the mesh already complies with the plant meshing mode of pure quads. Remember this workflow is only really required when working in quad meshing mode for the scene because in triangle mode the changes Plant Factory will make to any quads in the mesh are usually negligible and in mixed mode no changes would happen at all. Finally, keep in mind that the subdivide more and subdivide less buttons will not work for cutout meshes. The rest of the plant geometry will be subdivided accordingly, but the cutout nodes will stay the same because the geometry is not procedural but generated manually by you in the cutout editor. If you want to change the polygon amount of either the base grid, which again dictates the main topology of the mesh, or you want to add or remove Catmull Clark subdivision levels, you can do this quickly on the meshing tab and don't need to go back to the cutout editor. The sliders here act as a subdivision multiplier for each cutout settings in the editor, and they also boost all cutout shapes of the applied material at once, which is very convenient when you have lots of individual cutouts from an Atlas map. And in the case of Catmull Clark, 
The slider adds additional Catmull Clark subdivisions to each cutout on top of what the cutout already uses as subdivisions in the editor. You can link both the grid and the Catmull Clark subdivisions to LOD changes as well. Each LOD will then halve the grid resolution or remove one Catmull Clark subdivision level. Obviously, if a cutout does not use any Catmull Clark subdivision at all, linking this parameter to LOD will have no effect on any LOD of that cutout. So in most cases, you would rather want to link the grid to LOD and check the simplifications on lower LODs in the 3D view. This concludes the course on the cutout leaf node, and we have more features planned for this node in the next releases and will then expand this course with new lessons accordingly. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.